All right. So that is KQ. Yesterday, Kenya Power released their results, gentlemen. And uh, they actually reported a net loss of 3.1 billion shillings. Now, they, they attribute this particular drop in depreciate, a depreciation of the shilling. Uh, and just quoting the report they released, yeah, the unaudited report for the financial year 2022-2023, power purchase cost increased during this year from 117.3 billion shillings to 143. And you see the unrealized forex exchange losses on power purchase increased to 5.3 billion from 1.12. Look at that jump, 1.12 mm. to mm. 5 mm. billion. So Forex is having a real impact on, um, on companies' performance, Ken. I mean, talk to me, how much of a ripple effect will we see as the shilling depreciates, depreciates against the dollar? How much impact will we feel on the ground? Uh, the impact will be significant, particularly for businesses that um, have what I call a currency mismatch, where the revenue you're earning is in shillings, that's your asset and your income, but your expenditures are in dollars. So KQ is buying fuel in dollars. Uh, Kenya Power is having the purchasing agreements in dollars. Now in that situation, uh, it can put a business in a very, very tough position because your business model could actually be working, could be making an operating profit, but on the books, your booking losses, mm -hmm. which is can be very terrible because you might be on a good strategy that was it worried out for the currency, you'd actually be booking a profit. So I think um, it requires a bit more possibly companies exploring hedging techniques. Mm -hmm. How do you hedge uh, your currency? But, but that requires some good modeling and forecasting because unless you have a good sight of the next one, two, three years, then it's very easy for a company to actually be in the red very, very quickly. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dr. Lenye, could that uh, be argued in the context of government? We assume the government is a company that took loans, you know, uh, dollar-denominated loans, and they have to repay. That's why we see now the impact of revved up measures to collect even more because you're catching up against um, an obligation that is equally rising at a faster rate than you expected true uh, true because you see uh, we we are net uh, borrowers also because we borrow a lot so when we are to repay we have to repay more because of the rising uh, dollar uh, incidentally uh, for governments you will not be able to do those hedging those ones can only be possible with companies when you do forward future surging mm -hmm. when you do those interest rate swaps and the rest. But for governments, it's simply negotiation, re restructuring. Those are the ways that we are likely to head to so that we can actually counter the effect of uh, the ever-rising dollar. Uh, but again, even for companies, it will be a bit difficult because of uh, the fact that the rate at which it is going is higher and higher. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. And I, I'm glad you've introduced the issue about solutions. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm trying to look at the interventions here that we've seen uh, in regards to managing this particular situation. So we saw the reopening of the interbank uh, FX or dollar market uh, and also releasing some of the caps that were there because there was that cap not uh, selling uh, you know, 20% of the indicative, right? Which, again, sort of was to open up the, you know, that particular sector. Question is, now, also working with money remittance providers where they are only capped to sell at $100,000 uh, per customer in regards to these forexes. Now, on a larger scale, we also saw the, the issue of G2G, fuel importation, saying that it will ease uh, the pressure on the dollar in the local market. Ken, just assessing some of these interventions, which ones do you feel have been effective or are effective, mm -hmm. and which ones are we hitting or punching there? Oh, well, you definitely need a multi-pronged strategy. You need to look at the short-term uh, strategies, the medium-term, and the long-term. 
Um, I think the short term really has been around what you've said, uh, the spreads that mm -hmm. uh, banks uh, are possibly making. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Dr. Kamau Thugia said the number of banks that are breaching uh, their spreads and he's written to those banks and he's expecting a response. Then there's that interest rate corridor that hopefully should be able to bring some, some parity in the market. Mm -hmm. But you also need long-term solutions. I think one of the big long-term solutions that can really help Kenya is the issue of diaspora remittances. Mm -hmm. How do we boost that? Uh, Kenya right now earns about $4 billion in diaspora remittances. Uh, it's the number one source of uh, foreign exchange, way above tourism, tea, coffee. So it, it appears to be good on paper, but when you compare with other countries, in terms of what other countries in Africa get from diaspora remittances, Nigeria gets about $20 billion, Egypt gets about $20 billion, uh, Morocco, which is really the size of Kenya in terms of population and size, gets about $15 billion. It tells you there's still a big opportunity mm -hmm. for Kenyans to, and we have a lot of Kenyans doing amazing work out there. I don't think we are tapping into that as much as, as, as possible. Number two, looking at our export markets. Mm -hmm. Right now, I think we are too concentrated in one area. Mm -hmm. we, uh, most of our tea is going to the Middle East markets. Right now, Middle East has become a, a hot spot. So that could complicate uh, the dollars we get from tea. Mm -hmm. um, China is slowing down, so our exports started to China. So I think there's a big thinking on, can we make more products, number one, and can we have more markets? so okay. that we are not exposed. And I think Kenya ca can be a Morocco. We can be able to hit $15 billion right. worth of remittances, yeah. All right. Mm. Uh, Dr. Lenny, yes. uh, in regards to interventions that we are seeing, and Ken has hinted on a number of long-term strategies, uh, from where you sit, and you say you deal with fundamentals, the beauty about fundamentals is that it's, it's proven mm. to work. What will work for Kenya? What will work for Kenya, uh, one is to think in terms of how to stop the capital flight, attract uh, investors back. Like you see, most of our markets have been deserted by foreign investors. And uh, the vibrancy of the market is now down. We are slow in everything in terms of market. And again now, uh, when we also look at the investment environment, we have to really uh, make a good investment environment so that people can actually start companies here, uh, attract them, give them something that will actually bring them back to start operations within so that we can actually have employment, generation of income. So those are the directions that I'm looking at, the things that uh, can make us come to better fundamentals. Because for example, when we have those uh, uh, companies established here, we now have more income generated mm. gen generation and from there now we are able to spur our economy in terms of uh, our money manufacture things from within mm. because uh, the issue of net importer is what makes us to go that far because it's what affect our trade uh, deficit it's what affect our uh, balance of payment balance of trade mm. so when we do that we will be quite okay Okay. And uh, we'll also retain vibrancy in our markets. Okay. And the capital formation will actually be there because of that. Definitely. Yeah. And uh, uh, listening also to the governor talk about uh, what he sees as the short-term interventions in regards to this issue of the dollar. Um, he says that we are expecting a large cash flow mm -hmm. from the IMF, World Bank, and our regional DFIs mm -hmm. uh, to the tune of four mi 400 million dollars. Um, also by March next year, the World Bank uh, should be dispersing close to 750 million dollars. And uh, it, it, I mean, when, when I see IMF, when I see World Bank in the conversation, those are lenders of last resort. Mm -hmm. uh, is that the place that we are in, Ken? Um, unfortunately it is. So it might appear to be a good story that yes there is some money coming mm -hmm. uh, but we have to ask at what cost because you know part of the reason that the previous administrations had been facing east in terms of china is they felt the Bretton woods institutions uh, had too many conditions uh, to these facilities that was one of the reasons many african countries 
about 10, 15 years ago, started facing East. So the IMF and the World Bank, they are development partners, uh, but they're also in business. People forget that. And they also have their objectives and they also have their agendas. So I think it's important that as leaders of a sovereign nation, uh, that we be particularly careful uh, with either it's the East or the West, because the more of these facilities you're getting, the more concessions, that's what they call the concessional, the, the more concessions you'll have to make. And already we are seeing it in many other parts of the economy. So I think they need to find that sweet spot of getting support, mm -hmm. but not to a point where you're actually compromising on your sovereignty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I see that. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Lenny, is, is this a level sort of, of double speak? Because we are... Um, the conditionalities, first of all, already you're feeling the impact mm -hmm. on taxation, especially mm -hmm. uh, as the populace of Kenya. But again, expecting that to be a buffer uh, for the current problem. Uh, do you feel it's speaking from both ends of the mouth? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, it, when, when, we, when you are uh, hitting into something that also hit you, <laughs> you have to be very careful conditionalities of uh, just as Ken has spoken uh, are sometimes very difficult. They are stringent. They are, uh, they will bring, it's like uh, you are given something and the other one is being taken. So it might not really, we are not sitting in a very good position. The only thing is uh, probably we need to give, to be balanced. Let's have the East a bit also. Mm -hmm. Let's have the West and the eats east a bit and then uh, do that which we can do. So I think just going the other side of the Britain Woods institutions might not really be very beneficial to mm. us. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and, and in closing, gentlemen, because Kenyans are really thinking about this particular situation and one of the avenues that we, we bring change is through legislation. Now, um, there's, there was or there is a draft bill sponsored by Rongo Member of Parliament, Paul Abor, that seeks to criminalize forex hoarding, defined as the accumulation of forex currency uh, for speculative purposes beyond reasonable need. Um, and what they're saying is that firms caught stockpiling dollars beyond reasonable needs uh, faces a fine of up to 10 million shillings in proposal, uh, in a proposal that seeks to stamp out the hoarding of hard currency uh, I mean, Forex is, is, is a huge business, to be honest, because there, there are people who've made a killing with this appreciation. Uh, do you think um, going down the legislation way and this draft proposal of criminalizing hoarding uh, is also part of the solutions ammunition that we hold? I think uh, Paul's proposal really will be dead on arrival uh, because it faces a slippery slope. Number one, uh, you have to define what is beyond reasonable need. If I want to keep dollars, $10,000, $50,000, at what point do you say this is beyond somebody's reasonable needs? Uh, everybody has a right to hold the currency they choose to. So number one, it would fail on that, on that issue. And number two, we are living in a free market where investors want to have the ability to enter and to exit. So you want to have the ability to have a dollar account and a shilling account, and you want to be able to enter and exit. So as Professor Olwini had said, if you want to attract investors, those are the things that they want to see. Now when you start having, going the Ethiopian way, almost like the Ethiopian way where now you make people's exit uh, very difficult, mm. then you start losing your credentials as an investment destination mm -hmm. and people start going to Tanzania or other countries. So I think it's important we uphold the free market philosophy okay. uh, but also maintain a currency exchange rate that is uh, viable and is actually true because the reason people might want to hold uh, dollars is because maybe they feel the exchange rate is not reflecting but when people feel the exchange rate is reflective of the reality then people will will not need to hoard it. So I think it's building confidence okay. that that exchange rate is transparent and is easily tradable. Dr. Lenny, mm -hmm. do you hold the same views as Ken? Uh, yes, but uh, also uh, looking at it, uh, 
you, you know, when you are in a situation where it is so dangerous, you look to cling on anything. <laughs> this one is uh, this one is not not really something that can help us. Yeah, what can really help us is go the right way. We have a free floating exchange rate uh, that is uh, where the market determines the forces of demand and supply. Mm. Let's leave the forces of demand and supply determine the exchange rate, yeah. and uh, let us do what we need to do, which is actually produce that which we need. Yeah. Stop importing the, for example, foods and things like that. Mm -hmm. Work and manufacture things from within. Yeah. Let's face it uh, the right way. Uh, you know, like, uh, <laughs> I don't know whether they say, I'm not very good in Kiswahili. Nyani akitaka kwanguka, everything is like, will be holding something. Yeah. So I think that's, uh, uh, that's the thing. Let's face the reality okay. as a nation and uh, accept that we are down there let's work together mm. build our society do okay. the best so that we can actually have All things right. being done uh, as per the market definitely <laughs> <laughs> we are closing the week with points about nyani <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting man <laughs> no, no, what a way to close <laughs> Ah, beautiful, oh. beautiful time we've had. Gentlemen, mm. it's always a pleasure. Mm. Dr. Tobias Zolwenyi and uh, Ken Gishinga, uh, thank you guys for your input. And uh, I think you've just helped crown uh, the week uh, in a better way. Now we understand what we're dealing with when it comes to the way the shilling is performing against uh, the dollar and the implications of that. So I really appreciate it. And of course, with Ken's quote, we're told that we should never do something that he, is not, he doesn't do because he's our role model here. But uh, that's it. Uh, from all, uh, thank you very much also for joining with us throughout the week on Business Today. We really appreciate you. Thank you very much. My name is Nokit Kimboy. Enjoy your weekend. Up next, we have Mbio KTN. Stay tuned.